moving on, I wanted to catch up as well a little bit on the football stuff. I know I'm a bit late on this, but um, number one to catch up on was the Fulham result. Man United um, winning 1 0 away from home against Fulham after our poor run of results. The win was probably the most important thing. The performance itself was absolutely shocking. Um, I thought for the for the most part, I think Fulham really disappointed. No, Fulham were really disappointing from their point of view. I don't think they really had a good game plan. I think they sort of, I don't know what they were trying to do really. I think we were there for the taking. They didn't really do so. And maybe we thought Fulham were going to come out, out out the blocks faster. So we kind of rested on our lowers a little bit. But we were just playing very much within ourselves. Um, again, the play was all over the place. Defending was all over the place. We got a bit lucky in the beginning. We scored a goal which might have kind of made Fulham a little bit more nervous because we scored a goal. He got chalked off for offside. But Tommy did score quite soon. Well, quite early on in the game, that didn't work out. And again, maybe that made, made, made me a little bit nervous of kind of, you know, coming out of their shell a bit um and I, obviously some of our bigger players didn't really perform as per usual um you know you, you, you're looking at the likes of the brunos hoyland had a bit of a mare playing up front anthony probably had the worst game he's ever had playing for united um the persistence and the constant reselection of anthony as well in the team is just you know there's no way to kind of cut it for sure you know even if you're playing in a team full of play there's no way to know let's just say this there's no way if you play for a team you played any time but team sports you would know if there's a manager that just constantly keeps picking people who don't deserve to get picked it's gonna cause um a bad it's gonna kind of lead to a bad environment in a team locker room and shit people are not going to be happy because essentially part of the reason why you go to training and whatever maybe you do drills practice matches is so that you can prove your worth so that you can be considered for selection for the game that's kind of how usually things work unless you're like you know a messy type where you basically just you know you're always going to play because you're basically one of the world's best players or the world's best player but most of the time training is where you kind of perform and i think for the most part it, it, it usually kind of is twofold in terms of pressure football you're usually a bit of training and a bit of obviously form in the game because if you haven't been playing well in training but they bring in a sub and you score a hat trick most likely you're going to play in the next game but anthony's been stinking up the place for so long he's still got this you know um court case looming over there in brazil with the whole sexual assault thing which i'm not too sure where that kind of stands so obviously he's got stuff going on that would affect his form and that maybe that's just an excuse but even regardless of that he really shouldn't be starting game in game out he really shouldn't be he there's no business for him to be starting at all and if anything you know Ericton Hulk should probably take him out of the limelight to kind of give him a bit of time to get himself right or whatever it may be and to sort of like stop people you know basically highlighting his poor performances which will in fact kind of you know make him feel more shit about himself which obviously won't help him get out of the situation of the funk he's currently in so that's a bit of a weird one Bruno Fernandes of course stunk up the place but ended up scoring a goal right at the end um which I'm kind of conflicted on because I personally I'm not the biggest fan of him I think he's a bit of a stat padder but in terms of actually influencing games when you're watch, watching with your naked eye he hardly does anything but I would also prefer it if he did what he did like the moments right when he pops up and he's able to kind of deliver um, you know, with a final ball with a shot like that that ends up kind of winning the goal winning the match for us at the end that was kind of I thought a real good personification of where United are um, one rare moment of quality allowed us to kind of put away a team that we probably had no business this week beating because on the day we were basically as bad as them but i think that's basically been our saving grace over the years we probably should have ended you know seasons being much lower than what we are on the table but because we've got individuals who can effectively you know who can affect games in a big way with a moment of brilliance we would always got a get out of jail free card and i think in recent months in recent weeks you know get out of jail free card has kind of come up short for us but when you know when the time matters whatever it can be like we've got some players in our team who can produce a moment of brilliance like you know bruno fernandez did in terms of controlling the ball taking it you know you know take you know do the little dummy and then kind of delivering it into the set you know i think it was like a side foot finish just inside the box as well so beautiful finish very well taken and again we just marked on not much more to say about that kind of game um so i was actually happy about that and then i guess that led on to going away from home to copenhagen which i always thought would be a tricky game because obviously we're playing them at home and they gave us a lot of problems when they came to our home also in the Champions League. But I also just thought in terms of playing these type of games in Champions League, we have a temperament of a team where if we concede goals or if we go a goal behind, I feel like a lot of the players' heads drop. But this game started off differently. We actually played really well. I think the first 20 minutes, we absolutely tore 
um, you know, Copenhagen apart, we probably should have been two to three up. If any, you know, we should probably should have been two to three up within the first twenty. We end up scoring two goals within the first thirty, but we should have been at least three goals up in the first thirty. Personally, for me, um, but that didn't work out that way. And then, of course, what ended up happening was that they ended up scoring. No, we ended up conceding. We ended up giving. We ended up having one person sent off in terms of Rashford, uh, which obviously changed the flow of the game. But I still feel like when you got sent off, I think around the forty second minute or something, we could have easily held on to that 2-0 um, lead until half time which then would have given us opportunity to kind of solidify ourselves get ourselves organized again maybe bring on an extra defender and then we could have maybe had an opportunity to hit them on a break and score that third goal which probably would have killed the game but because we didn't hold ourselves together very well before the end of the first half we end up getting Rashford sent off and then right before the end of the first half they end up scoring a goal which gave them a big lifeline heading into the second half right and then um, obviously they scored a second goal <laughs> straight after and just 2-2 heading the second time and then obviously it was everybody's game in the second half but then we got a bit of a prize we got a bit of a reprise in terms of us basically scoring um, a penalty and you know the penalty was I think a little bit a little bit soft to be completely honest essentially Harry Maguire headed the ball onto the Copenhagen defender's arm and he was right in front of him I think that was a bit of a soft penalty but considering they gave we gave away a soft penalty too I think Varane or Maguire the ball kind of rolled against their arm as they controlling it so I guess they had to kind of even the score and of course Bruno Fernandes steps up right and he actually delivers from the penalty spot so it's a big moment for him big moment for the game and you think from then on the manager will put together some substitutions some different tactics or formation that will help us to hang on to that basically lead and essentially park the bus until the end of the game we didn't do that we kept playing the same way we were playing before very open um, not much defensive discipline and then we ended up kind of falling asleep at the back post I think it was Diego Dallo actually's fault um, that led to the um, Le, the, the Lucas Laregra Le sort of like chance or sorry goal that he scored to make it free all and then of course right at the end um, Rudy Badajari who the, the fucking commentators kept speaking about and wanking off uh, about him he eventually delivered he ends up scoring a goal a winner right at the end a very well taken half volley to be fair inside the box um, you know he didn't really have many touches but he absolutely smashed that into the box so into the roof of the net and of course you know there's opportunity for us to come back and I feel like this was a p perfect representation of why a lot of fans aren't really sold on Eric Ten Hag and the players I think this was definitely a 50-50 responsibility I feel like the manager didn't do enough to kind of get us organised compact and kind of get us to settle down whilst we were down to 10 men because we scored two goals and we get one man sent off we should have had a lot more defensive dif dis discipline nuance experience to kind of hold on and steady the ship until half time we didn't do that then we ha then we happened to get the lead we happened to get three two up in the second half from a lack of a penalty and he still doesn't make necessary changes to do it and the players also aren't able to kind of steady the ship so I feel like this is an equal blame situation but for me is a clear example why a lot of fans aren't really sold on Eric Ten Hag because his end game management is really bizarre like ultra ultra bizarre um i even feel like the lineup was extra extra bizarre i'm not going to lie uh playing the lineup that he did wasn't really for my liking especially the mctominay and ericsson playing as deep landed playmakers i'm not really too sure on that uh, it looks like he's already gone cold on amrabat he's already gone cold on mason mount which is absolutely incredible considering the amount of stink that he made to sign both of those players even if one was on loan um i just don't know what's going on really i think there's a lot of question marks around ericsson hagen personally for me if you had to kind of put a gun to my head and say will he be a success at United I'm going to say no um, already the amount of you know beefs and troubles he's had with players um, you know not really know who his best side is the signings um, you know the selection policy all this sort of stuff is really kind of making me you know not really sure that he's the guy and just in general my main thing for me that's really kind of not making any sense is the in-game management and the thing that really kind of bothers me it's bothered me for a while was the moment when for the longest time, he kept playing Amrabat as a left back, right? So Amrabat comes as a defensive midfielder that's going to be cover for Casemiro, and he keeps playing him at left back. And it's like, I know we don't have any left backs at the moment because, you know, Malassia and Shaw are injured, but surely you should just play a centre back in that position and put Amrabat in his favourite position because the midfield is a position I feel like we need the most sort of like quality cover for because we don't have a lot. I think defence we can get by with Evans and Maguire. Again, they're not the best options, but whilst, you know, Varane isn't in favour and whilst Martinez is injured, you can get away with Evans and Maguire against most teams. Probably can. But I feel like that midfield, you really need to have some quality in that midfield 
middle of the park to actually get a handle on the game. And I think playing Amrabat out wide or a left back for so long and then only recently decided to change it and put Lindelof at left back and then put Amrabat's favorite position or whatever it may be has been on. But I also don't like just a tiny thing as well, the McTominay thing. McTominay, I feel like, has never been a defensive midfielder. He's just been unlucky to be blessed with the body he has and the frame and the stature and the height he has. People just think he's a defensive midfielder, but he's clearly shown over recent weeks and even just, you know, with form in general uh, for for Scotland and whatever, that he's definitely more of a Bruno Fernandes type player in terms of a roaming, you know, eight that kind of runs into the box, late runs and whatnot, kind of similar to maybe Frank Lampard. And that's why he kind of, you know, flourishes. And even then, he still doesn't have enough touches on the ball, right? He's still probably not of the level to play for United anyway, in general. He should probably should never be playing for United, especially if he's having, you know, like, what's it called? I think one match he had less than 15 touches on the ball, which is fucking frightening. But if you want to get the best out of him, you're playing further forward. For some reason, Eric Ten Hag plays it further forward sometimes, but it also plays defensive midfield. And so for me personally, I think with McTominay, if you can't play him as an attacking midfielder, you shouldn't play him at all. That's just my personal opinion. He shouldn't play that all if he can't play attacking the forward. And the fact that we keep persisting with him in that position is a real big worry. It shows the manager doesn't really know what he's doing in terms of identifying the key, you know, the best assets of his players and then trying to make sure that he can utilise them the best to serve the team. It's all a bit all over the place, to be fair. And then again, of course, the selection process thing, you know, the persistence, so, you know, with fucking Rashford, even though he's been playing trash, the persistence with Bruno Fernandes and never dropping him is a super annoying. Um, the defence at the moment, I don't really know what's going on there. It seems like he's out of favour with Varane. He's picking Maguire and, and Evans and not really budging from that sort of lineup. It's on whatever. All this stuff is really strange. Even the goalkeeping stuff, right? Odana hasn't really been a revelation. He hasn't really pulled up any trees. And the Turkish lad we made a big stink about signing he hasn't really been able to play. You know, hasn't really been able to get any minutes. There's not rotation around there. It's just a bit of a strange one in general. We've got a really stubborn manager who is very delusional. Also, I think he left after the game against Copenhagen. He said, oh, there's lots of positives about the game. I was thinking to myself, bro, how can there be positives about this game? There should be none, zero. There's no positives because we had the game in our hands and we fucked it twice. Twice, you know, once when we were two up and then another one where we, we got, went three, two up with 10 men. We should have basically to be able to hold on to it. The fact that we didn't says a lot more about the management and the team than anything else. But 